Good morning, everyone. It is God o'clock, which is probably around 6.30. I'm, God woke me up, thank God, right? Just a little bit late. I have a little special guest here. Hail. Actually, he's the one. He, he turned on the light and he was like, Mommy, can I do my devotional? I was like, yeah, do your devotional. And I put the covers over my head and God was like, ma'am. <laughs> I was like, sire? He was like, ma'am, I told you to get up off that YouTube. Now look at you. Your son is doing a better example than you. Yes, sir. <laughs> so up we went. And this quarterly is talking a lot about managing your um, your finances. That's what we're it's in stewardship, right? That's what we're on right now. Today really got me. It's Second Peter chapter... 3 verse um, 10 through 14 is one of the ones. So I want to read that out to you real quick. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will dissolve in fire. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this. What holy and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day he will set the heavens on fire. And the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. So, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in His sight. Fire, everything, heaven, earth, the elements themselves, the atoms, Poofing in a very violent form. Like, that's a little scary. Like, isn't that, like, that's, like, very scary. Like, let's be honest. Like, everything is going to go poof. And not just, like, oh. Like, not going to tweak me of an eye. Things going to burn. Down to the atoms. Burn. And that's scary. But it ties back to like what my dad told me before I came here, right? He was like, like for the, the whole week that he knew, right? Cause we, I only knew about this for a week. He said, make sure you have a life jacket. I was like, well, dad, it's an island. Like I know that. He's like, no, no, no. Make sure you have a way out in case you need one. I'm like, no dad, I'm gonna go do the, I'm gonna do the, um, the work of the Lord. I'm not gonna have a way back. I'm not gonna like plan an escape route. He was like, have an escape route. I was like, no daddy, I don't need one. God is going with me. He was like, uh-huh. Here's the thing. I was convicted. He was not. So he had every right to question and make sure that I had asked the right questions. And I completely felt that. There was nothing wrong with him being like, mm, what about this? Have you asked about that? I don't get it. I don't understand. Because I didn't either. Right? So... It's okay that he had those concerns. I appreciated that he had those concerns because it wasn't that he wasn't being supportive. He was being supportive and wanting to fill some holes so that he could feel some peace as well. I'm his baby, right? I'll always be his baby. Um, but at the end of the week, because he kept saying that analogy, make sure you have a life jacket. Where's your life jacket? And it made no sense for the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept laugh. I tried not to laugh. I did. Every time he brought it up, I was like, okay, he has a life jacket. I'm not making a life jacket. When I finally, like the last day, he said, I was talking to God and I was like really trying to figure out how to help you understand about this life jacket. I'm like, come on, Jesus. And um, he said, I'm your life jacket. If anything goes wrong, you call me. And if it's in my power, I will make it in my power to get you and extract you and bring you home. 
Don't ever feel like you're stuck. I'm here and I will help you come home. I will fight for you to get home too. And that really stuck with me because the same thing happened here, right? It says, so dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, while you're waiting for the heavens and the earth to be set on fire, fire. make every fire, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed, what holy and godly lives you should live. Guys, God is our life jacket. All of this is gonna go away. Thank God. Cause it's all broken, right? Wars, earthquakes, the common cold, it's all gotta go. It's so annoying, <laughs> right? It's gonna go away. He promised that. And he promised that it's going to be scary. It's going to be trouble. But we have him to hold on to. So please, if you have any questions on how to hold on to him, on how to have a devotional like this, reach out to me. I'll, I'll help you in any way I can, in every way I can. We'll pray together on it. Just make sure you have your life jacket on. Love you guys. Have a great day. It's Monday here. So have a great rest of your Sunday. Bye.